Well, hello and welcome back to another video. Now, something a bit different today. I've uh, hopped over on the boat and come over to Herm Island. Now, I'm going to be targeting some bass on lures today, hitting a few different marks over the next few hours and hopefully hooking into some fish. So it's about 8.30 in the morning, still uh, nice and early in the day. That sun's come up now and I have to say it's an absolutely glorious day. I guess you'd call it sort of early springtime now. Um, and yeah, the weather really is pretty, pretty fantastic. Now, last time I was over here was towards the end of the summer last year, um, and it was ideal conditions really. Although it was very, very flat, and um, the sea was extremely calm, um, it was a really overcast day with thunder and lightning, so it gave a bit of cover um, for the fish. Today, however, sea state is exactly the same. It's very flat, but we've got that bright sun, so uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how we get on. Now I've arrived at the first mark, um, I've got my rod set up now, I'm using a 9 foot Shimano Aenos 7 to 35 gram lure rod, a Shimano Nasky 4000 with 26 pound Daiwa J braid, and I've got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and at the moment I've just stuck on a Savage Gear sand deal. Now the first mark I'm going to be fishing is relatively deep water, it's in between the channel so you have a lot of tide running through, and the tide is ebbing at the moment. I thought it would be worth a try here whilst the tide's still high. Um, most of the other spots that I want to try are going to be sort of low tide, low tide marks, so that'll be in a few hours time. So anyway, it's going to be a nice chilled day, nice and relaxed. Um, there's hardly anybody about. We've got one boat moored in Belvoir at the moment. But uh, yeah, brilliant day. Just here to enjoy it. Hopefully we get a fish, that'll be a bonus. So uh, let's get fishing and see if we can find any bass. Now I'm just starting off with banging the lure out as far as I can get it purely because I've just re-spooled my reel and this is the first time of using it so it's just good to get the braid wet and then obviously by retrieving it in you get a nice or should get a nice line lay So nothing fancy to start with, just that Savage Gear sand deal. Just casting out and pretty much retrieving in a straight line. Like I said, there's a lot of tide that runs through here. And I'm pretty sure the tide's running from left to right at the moment. Water clarity is fairly good. Pretty clear. To say we had a lot of rain yesterday, It's actually clearer than I thought it would be. I thought it would be rather murky around here. I've got a variety of lures with me today. I've got a bit of everything, some hard plastics, some soft lures. I've even got a couple of top waters with me. So let's hope throughout the day we can find a couple of fish. So that tide is really, really racing through now. As the tide's dropping, it's getting faster and faster and it's running from left to right. So if I cast the lure out here, it's drifting all the way along that way. Now what I might do is go over to that area and just off the end of those rocks and target into there, see if we get anything. Now I've had no knocks or anything like that. But in all honesty, I think it's gonna be uh, I think it's going to be tough work today, try and, try and find some bass. I'd be more confident on the round about the low water, fishing rougher ground. Now even though I've only fished this particular, mark, uh, particular spot a handful of times, it's not a holding area for bass. You're more hoping that they're passing through whilst you're here. Now what would be really good is if you could kayak, get on a kayak and hop onto those rocks there and fish all off the back of them, all around it in fact.
Now you'd have thought it was summertime because look at that. It is absolutely stunning today. Now I've just had about 10 or 15 sandals follow my sandal right to my feet. So there's bait fish around. Are there any bigger fish around? I'm probably not gonna stay at this mark too much longer because I don't feel like it's gonna be that productive. The tide is absolutely ripping. So I've got maybe a 15, 15, 20 minute walk to the next spot. I'll go scope it out. The tide may be uh, still a bit too high to get onto some rocks that I want to be on. But I'll go have a look, see how it is, and uh, we'll just go from there. So off to the next spot. Nothing happening at that first place. So I'm gonna head round the cliffs here, hopefully hop down some rocks and uh, fish a different area. I can't believe the weather today. It's absolutely glorious. It's really warm now. And as far as fishing goes, really not the best conditions, but uh, you can't really turn down the chance to come over to a place like home on a day like today. Whether you catch or not, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be a pretty epic day. Just give you a little pan around. Crazy views. A couple of boats coming in now. This is the direction I'm heading in. I'm gonna go past this head over here. And just down, down below it, there's a spot. So we'll give that a try. I'm actually really tempted to put top water on. Um, I mean, even if uh, even if you don't get any takes, might get a few swirls at the lure, so just indicate there's some fish there. But let's see if we can find some. So we're at a completely different mark now. A lot shallower ground with a lot of, lot of rough ground, a lot of boulders. Now what I'm putting on is the IMA Suzuki Bora Mullet. I'm just gonna mix up the retrieve, slow, fast, give it a few twitches, few pauses, pauses here and there, and just see how I get on. Now I can't remember if I fished this particular, uh, particular spot last time I was here. There is about 100 meters over there, a spot which I tried last time and uh, managed to get a little bass. So I'll hop onto those rocks afterwards, but I'll give it a few blasts from here and see if we get anything. So what we're getting in here is massive surges of water coming in. Now again, the tide is absolutely racing. You've got a head sticking out here and the tide is whipping around it that way. So if I cast a lure out here, it takes it all the way along there. Now this is fairly deep water and we're getting lots of surges of water coming in and it's sucking back out. So it can be a really good area to target for bass. They can be waiting in this area, waiting for things to suck back down, just like the water's doing here. And they'll pounce really, really late and close to the shore. Now that's the theory anyway. Whether it's gonna be the case today, we'll soon find out. So on the opposite side of the island now, it is absolutely glorious. You'd have thought it's a summer's day. Um, now I've got a feeling the bass fishing is going to be pretty hard today. 
I'm heading to the north of the island to fish off some rocks as that tide's flowing out. We've got about an hour and a half until low tide. Now I'm on the east side of the island now, and as you can see, the tide's whipped out. Now just to this island, just to the right hand side of this island here, we've got some oyster beds out there. And I just thought I'd give you a quick show because I'm walking along the ground here. Now all of this ground here would be absolutely ideal for bass fishing. At night, you can skim a lure over the top of it, work a, a soft plastic or a paddle tail or a shallow diver just over the rocks um, in darkness, and I'm sure you'd pick up quite a few bass. You could fish off the beach and just plant a bait in between all the, uh, the rough ground onto the sand, because there'll be a lot of fish in here at night time. I'd imagine you'd, you'd definitely get bass, you'd get gilthead bream, red mullet, you'd get all sorts in here. Now, like I said, there's oyster beds just over there. And as I'm walking along the beach here, there's the washed up oyster shells here. And you can see they just gather and collect in the rocks. As you can see down here, there's quite a few. Now these are all empty, obviously, but there's loads of them here. They go all the way back there as well. There's even a little baby scallop shell there. So it just goes to show you the type of food that's available over ground like this, on beaches like this. There's gonna be plenty of it, loads and loads of shellfish. There'll be sand eels buried in the sand. There'll be lugworm. Right out far deep there, there's razor, uh, you can dig for razor fish and gaper clams. So it's got a wide variety of food if you're targeting bass in areas like this. So I just thought that was worth a quick glimpse. I'm gonna head in that direction. I'm gonna walk along the shoreline. Now, even though over here in the distance looks good, it is completely flat calm and it's just over sand. So I'm not too optimistic really about that, that area. I'm gonna head further that way, hopefully find a bit of tide and a bit of chop and we'll target some bass there. They're absolutely everywhere these oyster shells. Got a cluster of three stuck together there. Little baby ones. Now these all break free from the oyster beds. Now you can actually get to the oyster beds now. Some of them are uncovered here. There's a few that go further out, which the tide's still just running over. So while I'm here, I'll just give you a quick little show. So here we go. All the oysters bagged up. These are relatively young, pretty small these. But you've got various different sizes. As you can see, there's quite a few of them. There's more behind these rocks here. There's a lot more further out and they run all along there. And these must be old ones. They've just flipped upside down, stacked on top of each other because they're not in use at the moment. Probably keeps them weighted down in the tide. Well, that's the oyster beds in Herm. Now, these are shipped worldwide as well. They go absolutely everywhere. As far as, I think, China and places like that, they get shipped absolutely worldwide. And the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure you can't buy Herm oysters on Herm Island, which I've never understood. But these are uh, available in Guernsey as well. They supply the local restaurants. So that's the oyster beds in Herm. So whilst I'm here, just walking through a few rock pools here on the way to the north side of the island. And I just thought I'd show you what I have here. Now obviously, uh, if you would have watched any of the coastal foraging videos on my channel, you'd have seen me going out to gather these, but these are the abalone, or the green ormer as we call them in Guernsey. As you can see, this one's only about two, two and a half inches. So that's obviously undersized. But this is another source of food which is available for the fish. Um, the green ormer. Now it is actually an ormering tide today. Um, today, tomorrow and the day after. So you can actually collect these. I mean, if I do come across a few big ones, I may keep them, but uh, yeah, we'll just see.
but that's another type of shellfish which is available here on Herm Island. So like I was saying, the place, the beaches along here are absolutely stacked with food, um, which should mean good fishing. Well, that was good. Weed on the first cast. I'm in, baby. I am in. Yes, what a lovely bass that is. That is a beauty of a bass. Please, please stay on there. That is an, that's only lightly hooked. Really, really lightly hooked. Come here. Please, please, please stay on there. Come on. Oh, that's a beauty. An absolute beauty. Right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Ah, no. Right. Right guys, as you can see, I've got myself into a bit oh, of a nightmare here. Bloody hell. Now, as you can see, I've got this bass under my legs here, but that was a must. I didn't want to hurt it, but as you can see, oh my God, my rod's in the water. Oh, bloody hell that hurt. Right, I'm just going to get this fish up and out the way. <sighs> right, I've just put the fish to one side. My rod's in the water. Shit. Oh no, look at that. Uh, completely submerged. soaking wet that was an absolute nightmare now let me just get myself sorted because that was crazy i saw that bass follow the lure right into here the water's crystal clear i can see absolutely everything and check out my hand two lures one to the front one to the back of the hand what a bloody nightmare that's what i came for that is a beautiful bass. Pretty slim, I reckon that bass has just spawned. But good length on it. I'm not sure if I've got a tape measure with me. But that is an absolute beauty. And I'm still getting myself sorted out. So I'll give you a better show in a second. <laughs> it took a while. But look at that beast. That is a fine bass that. I'd give that about, I reckon it's about four pounds. But he looks like he's gone through the walls, this one. He's got a bit of a bite mark on his side. And his scales are really, really thin. He even like it's lost some scales. So I think it might have been attacked by something. But check that beauty out. That's a fine bass. Herm Island, producing the goods. You cracker. Oh yes, I'm so happy about that. So happy not to blank, get a fish on camera, make the video. Um, yeah, really, really stoked on that. Now, the unfortunate thing is, as you can see, my hand's still got a bit of blood on. I took a treble to the front here and one just to the back of the knuckle. Now, I was stood on two boulders there. Um, that fish was so lightly hooked, literally it was just one of the, one of the hooks on the back treble that was just through the lip there. So it would have gone back absolutely fine. However, with the two hooks in my hand, it was flapping about. My rod was in the water. I had no choice whatsoever, but to, to, I had to grab it as, as hard as I could so it wouldn't keep flapping about. 
fortunately, really, really fortunately, and I'm kind of glad this has happened on camera because it does show that it happens. Fortunately, the hooks didn't go past the barb. Um, if they were gone past the barb, I'm on a rock, out on the beach at low tide, nobody is around, you know, it would have been a, a bit of an issue. It's not as if I'm gonna die or anything like that, but uh, you know, if you started to bleed heavily, it, you could do with help, someone just to help you. So it just goes to show that when you are, you know, just pay attention to what you're doing. I was lucky there, that was fortunate um, that the, the hooks didn't go past uh, the barbs in my hand because that could have been a whole lot worse. Fortunately, they came out pretty easy. But like I said, I had to put a lot of pressure on the bass. Um, I've had it in a pool down here. It's not looking good. So I am going to keep this one. Um, I didn't plan on keeping any bass. Obviously, I've got to get the boat back, so I've got to keep it on me. But uh, because, of that, for, because of that reason, I am going to keep this fish. But so, so stoked to, to, to catch. Um, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I'm literally just casting out onto sand. So I was kind of half-hearted thinking, you know, God, it's sand here. I can see through the water. There's not going to be any fish about. And I saw that fish follow the lure. It came out of nowhere, to be honest. Follow the lure right in close um, in amongst some weed. And I almost just paused it because it looked like it was going to swim away. And it kind of just did a bit of a zigzag, went for the lure. And as soon as I hooked it, I thought that's not hooked properly. That's really, really light. Um, so I, I was just praying it stayed on there and then we had the fiasco of the hook in the hands but do you know what it's completely worth it so absolutely brilliant I'm going to give it a few more chucks around here we're coming up to low tide um, we'll see if we can find another one so then I seem to have sorted myself out a little bit now and my rod's been completely dunked in the water um, which really isn't good so I'm going to have to give that a thorough, thorough rinse when I get home but my rod was down here. Luckily, it was trapped in these rocks because otherwise it would have drifted off. Now that fish took right at the end of my rod tip here, just in between these two rocks. So as you can see, there's a little reef just there and another one a bit further out. But it's all sand here and it, I mean, it looks tropical. It's so, so see-through. Um, so I was really surprised to see that fish just come out of nowhere. I'm going to give it a few more casts now. now. I'm just using the chest cam at the moment because I'm on these boulders here. There, All the boulders behind me are absolutely covered in weed. So if I do hook another fish, I want it to be as easy as possible to, to unhook and get back in the water. So I've given it a few more casts in this area and nothing else is happening. So I think I'm going to move along. Now my reel's pretty crusty at the moment, all that salt's starting to dry up. Um, I do actually have a bottle of water with me, I could rinse it, but I've only got a little bit left and I kind of want to keep that because I'm going to need it over the next couple hours. So we're pretty much on low tide now. Um, low tide was at 12.30 and it's 12.30 now, so it's, uh, it's going to be slack for sort of about 20 minutes or so and then it will start pushing in again. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, I've got a couple hours until I get the boat back. So I'm gonna head over this way, just walk along the beach and see if I can get a few casts away anywhere there. Um, anywhere there. Uh, yeah, and then we're just gonna go from there really. I'm gonna head back past the oyster beds later on. So I might have a little look around the beach there and then we'll get the boat home. So I thought I'd just quickly say a little bit about the lure I've been using. Now the lure I've got on here, which is what I just had that fish on, is the IMA Suzuki 140. Now, in my opinion, this is the best shallow diving lure you can buy. And this color, this one here is a bit battered and bruised, but this is, this is the, uh, the Bora mullet. So as you can see, it's sort of got a mullet pattern on it with a little blue dot at the top there. Now with the lip here, this is kind of a, I class as, as a shallow diving lure. Um, I think they state on the packet that it, it swims from about 60 centimeters down, down to a meter. Now, I find it swims a little bit shallower than that, which is why I really like it. <clears throat> In Guernsey, I fish rough, shallow ground all the time. So a lure like this um, comes into its own. And this year, in fact, this lure has caught me most of the bass I've had. Now, I also have and all bass anglers will know and uh, have heard of these lures. 
the exact same pattern, but this is the IMA Hound Glide 125. This is also a brilliant lure. This one does swim a little bit deeper. As you can see, it's got the bib on it here, which means um, it's gonna dig under the water a little bit, little bit further down and swim a bit deeper. But if you just raise the rod tip a little bit, you can also get that working really shallow too. Now, I literally just bought this yesterday. This is another IMA lure. This is the Komomo um, SF145. So a longer profile and a little bit heavier, this one. I think this is 26, 26 grams, this lure. Um, and this one here, if I just get it out of the packet, Now, one of the best bass I actually had was on um, a Komomo. And again, the Bora mullet. And as you can see here, compared to the Suzuki, the lip on that is a lot flatter, whereas that one goes out that way a little bit. So that means that that is gonna swim super shallow. So a brilliant lure for really rough ground, um, shallow water, when you've got sort of about a foot of water above all the roughness, the weed, the rocks, the boulders, that's a good lure to go to. I think that one states it swims between 20 and 50 centimeters, so a lot shallower than the other two. But yeah, these three lures um, have done me really well, especially over the last sort of six months. So um, yeah, if you haven't heard of them, check them out and uh, you, they'll, they'll definitely get you into some bass. I just can't believe how clear it is. You can literally see the lure under the water perfectly. Such nice conditions. Not ideal for bass fishing, but ideal for being out in. I'm on again. Boom. A lot smaller this one. And again, you can see really light colored, sandy looking bass. Oh, it's coasted a bit. So, so light these bass. Look at this one. That's actually not a bad size. But there we go, bass number two. Let's not get a hook in the hand this time. Beautiful, only about just over a pound I'd say, but still a bass, you beauty. Well, we're in again. But there we go, bass number two. Only a little tiddler this one, but still a bass. Absolutely fantastic, once again, on that IMA lure. And another fish before we leave. Let's get him back. You can see him shimmering in the sun there. So silver. And that's how clear the water is. I see it swimming all the way to the bottom. Well, judging by the size of that last one, I'd be guessing there's a few swimming about here. You can actually see the lure slalom, like slaloming through the water. I give it the odd twitch just to make it shimmer. Just with the sun beaming down on it, it's gonna get that all those colors, that silvery, shimmery color in it. It's gonna work as an attractor. I'm in again. And well, that one took and I thought it came off after a second, but it must've just bolted towards me. Only a little one again. He seems to have given up the fight now. Could be foul hooks possibly.
Another one bites the dust. Off you go, mate. And off like a dart. So as I said, where there's one small one, there's likely to be more. And that one really was a small one. Well, what a day this has turned out to be. I haven't actually fished in a week. There's another one there. <laughs> How's that come off? No, nope, swimming towards me again. Little baby bass. Oh, now he's going. Or is that one a baby? It's a bit bigger. Well, they're definitely here now. This one is bigger, actually. Still only small. There we go. Just like that, they all come along at once. Lovely job. So that tide's definitely turning now. I can tell by the way the waves are breaking in the shallows here. They're slowly creeping up and covering those boulders that um, I, I was just, just on. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I can still get onto it. I'm gonna give it a few more casts from there. I'm just gonna go down to the one camera of the chest cam for now, because it's easier. It's hard to, uh, to take the other camera over that side. And we'll give it a few more casts, see if we can find a few more bass. And uh, yeah, then we might call it a day. I'm in again. I just said one more cast to myself. <laughs> but you know what it's like. You say one more. They're so feisty, these fish. My God. It's trying its hardest to shake that hook. Only small again. They aren't half feisty. Bigger than the last two. There we are. Another bass down. Got the wake of the Condor Ferry that's just come through. And it's gonna start flooding over these rocks, so I need to get the heck out of here. There we go. Another bass down. Let's nose dive him in. And off he goes. Okay, time to get out this place. Well, that was fun. Hooked into a few fish there. Now, they're definitely, those fish would stick around. Um, you could probably continue fishing there, but you'd have to keep moving back. And the problem I had there was the, the big rock I was stood on. There's a load of boulders covered in weed that you have to hop over to get onto it. And they were starting to get covered now. And with Condor coming in there, you get all the weight come off it and it just pushes the tide in even, even more. So it's flooding over uh, quite quickly. But I'm probably gonna call it a day there, to be honest. Um, the boats, I was gonna stay till 4.30, but I might get the earlier boat back at 2.30 and it's now 1.30. So uh, I'm gonna head over that way and maybe grab a drink from somewhere, recoup. Um, got a few bent out hooks on my lure now. But uh, I'm gonna get up, up and off the beach here and then, uh, yeah, get ready to go. So I think that's gonna do it for my little bash trip on Herm Island today. Um, I must say I'm really really pleased really pleased to hook into a few fish um, It was nice to get that bigger one. I'm fortunate About the whole hook in the hand situation 
and having to having to harm the fish but uh it's definitely not going to go to waste i've got it in my backpack so i'm going to get back it's one of the reasons why i'm going to leave a bit earlier um, i don't fancy having a fish in my backpack in this hot weather for the next three four hours um yeah really happy to get a few fish hooked into a few small ones as well over all of that sandy area um which was surprising and all a learning curve for me as well like i said that would be one of the last places i would i would target on a day like today so it just goes to show how, how wrong i i could be now i'm heading back over towards the harbour to get the boat back into guernsey um but it's been a thoroughly enjoyable day i hope you've enjoyed the video maybe picked up a tip here or uh, here or there um, like I said, those IMA lures are absolutely brilliant. I've been using, uh, especially the Suzuk, I've been using loads over the last few months. So they're one for the tackle box. So once I get up onto this headland, I'm going to go and get myself a, uh, a well-earned drink, sit down for half an hour and get the ferry home. So I'd just like to say thanks very much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. There's going to be loads more to come. Um, I'll be coming over to Herm Island again in the summertime and maybe even doing a night, um, an all-night fishing session as well with some baits. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.